So as this is the last presentation of the morning, I will try to make it clear, so interesting uh, and brief uh, as possible. Um, as uh, Mr. Ving said it, so we are three persons to make the presentations. So the first one is myself. I will present the R&D uh, regional funding possibilities for the companies. The second uh, person is my colleague, uh, Beata Bibrowska. She will present you uh, the urban Europe uh, topic and uh, give few words about FEDER. And the third one is um, indirect colleague, uh, Tanya Van Loon, working for the uh, BEA, uh, so the, the Brussels uh, Enterprise Agency, and she will talk about Horizon 2020 program. So before to start to present you the different uh, financial possibilities we offer to the companies, I would like to, to present uh, the, the organization for, for which I work, named the Institute for Research and Innovation. Uh, we, we are in Brussels since 2004. We don't make any research or innovation, but we, we grant it. We give financial possibilities to uh, implement, to develop, to research uh, new ideas. So this morning we saw that um, there are many new ideas uh, growing up in other cities and we would like to have the same uh, in Brussels. Uh, our mission, so how I said it, uh, is to promote and encourage the innovation. And for that, we have 31 person working, uh, from which 16 uh, have a master level. So they mostly uh, scientific advisor as myself, but specialized in, uh, in uh, different uh, fields. What's also interesting is to know what we have uh, foreseen as a budget in 2012, for the companies, we had uh, a few more than 42 million split it. So because we grant companies, but we also grant uh, universities, uh, collective uh, centers as uh, BBRI and uh, universities, we split this amount in the half for the companies and the other half for uh, the research centers. So who can come to, to Innovities for to get a grant? Companies having uh, full or partial activities in Brussels, they can have already some research activity or not. So this is not uh, an eligibility criteria. We fund, of course, only innovative projects. Huh? There are other public or authorities which uh, have the, the goal to finance uh, or other projects, but without this innovative uh, aspect uh, inside. We also ask that the projects introduced uh, at Innovities are uh, having an impact on the economy, employment and environment in Brussels, of course. The, the demand must start before the, the, the begin of the program, and uh, there are some obligations that the company has to, to fulfill in order to, be, uh, to benefit from uh, a grant um, of uh, Innovities. And the last point, of course, because we never finance, and this is um, an obligation coming from the European Commission, we never grant at 100%, so the company needs to have uh, a financial capacity to finance his part of the project. There are globally for the company has seven uh, kind of programs. The first one is the feasibility study. The second, uh, the research. So it's, uh, it's more, uh, it's, uh, we talk about applied research, not fundamental research here. Development, innovation. The micro projects are research development and innovation projects, but at a smaller uh, scale and budget. We have also a program named the Youth Innovative uh, Company. This is, this is more, uh, uh, a competition between different uh, companies in order to get uh, a grant. They are every year uh, one or two winners. And the last one, we, give also, we have also a program um, having as a goal to finance uh, the, the intellectual property rights, so we talk about uh, patents. So here I will talk about the different uh, modalities of uh, granting uh, and also give some definition of the, the different uh, kind of programs we have. The first one is the feasibility study. It's a pre preliminary step before to uh, develop or research a project. So there we analyze the, the feasibility of <coughs> this future project 
you can introduce it uh, the whole year. Who can have it? The SME, so less than 250 uh, person and two other conditions also about uh, the turnover and uh, uh, the, the total active of the company. The risk, of course, here is low because if you <coughs> don't get any result, you will not lose so much money as if you start direct with a research or a development project, which is longer and uh, imply a greater budget. The valorization is middle or long term. The evaluation is done by Innovities and the funding can go from 50 till 75% of the total expenses with a maximum of 125 kilo uh, euros. The research is the acquisition of uh, innovative uh, knowledge. So here we are step uh, before the development. We, we have a, a bigger risk because here we, uh, we can come to uh, an unsuccess project. When you can introduce it, we organize two calls every year. <coughs> Sorry. One call at the beginning of, of the year and the second one just launch the uh, beginning of next week with uh, a closure date at 19 uh, Augustus. This is, these calls are foreseen for small companies and large companies, but mostly we get between 70 and 80% uh, applying uh, forms coming from SMEs. The risk is higher here, of course, because you can come to an uh, unsuccess program. So this is the reason why we give between 50 and 80% of the total budget. These percentage, percentages are coming from the Europe, European Commission, so this is uh, something which is uh, the same in the different uh, Belgium uh, regions. The development, how I said it, and I will not repeat everything, but it's a step uh, which is coming after, usually after a research program. So we, we have uh, some new knowledges, and now we want to go to uh, a prototyping, a modeling of uh, these results. And there, we give uh, a granting level uh, lower than before, between 25 and 60% for subsidy. And we also have the loan. Uh, possibility, so you have to pay back uh, what you get, and there the percentage is uh, between 40 and 75 percent. Innovation is the lowest level of uh, innovative projects, so there we are talking about innovation in the process or in the organization of the company. This is not pejorative, but of course it's easier to implement. So. We ask the company to uh, use the ICT technologies in that kind of project. This is also a project that you can demand uh, during the, the call that we will launch uh, next month. Um, the SMEs are candidates for that kind of uh, demand, but they can also collaborate with the large companies under some conditions, and the funding rate is uh, between 15 and 35%. This always depends on the, the size uh, of the company. The last one, the R&D uh, micro project is exactly the same as the research development and innovation uh, projects, but uh, is uh, reserved to the uh, small companies, so less than 50%. They can, this kind of demand can be introduced uh, all the, the whole year. And, uh, the duration is included between three and 15 months. The maximum budget is 20,000 euros per, per month, and the funding rates are exactly the same as uh, previously described. The Youth Innovative uh, Company Program is uh, a challenge between different companies introducing the demand. So the call is uh, open uh, at the moment uh, till 30, the 31st of uh, July. It's uh, reserved to the small companies, so less than 50 person, for uh, a duration of maximum three years. And here, it's something a little bit uh, specific. We can grant the project uh, with a rate of 100% and maximum 300,000 euros uh, budget for the program. And the last, uh, the, but not the, the, the less interesting program, it's the intellectual property uh, rights that we can um, partially uh, fund in order to uh, defend, 
to prepare to introduce and uh, to defend uh, a patent at a national and international level. So you can, the small and medium companies can introduce this the whole year. And uh, the funding rate is between 35 and 80% of the total expenses for a maximum duration of three years. So after all this interesting information, and uh, I will let you my um, email and uh, telephone in order to have more uh, information if you want it. So you can go first, uh, go on our website, so innovies.be. Uh, there you can find our application forms, which are structured in three main parts. So the summary of the project, information about your company, and presentation of the project. I remember you that we have uh, an open call at the moment, so the youth innovative enterprises, and you can go on our website and see all the eligibility uh, criteria. And we will open, so uh, in some days, the RDI uh, projects program, uh, which is open to all size uh, companies. So thank you for your attention, because this presentation is a little bit uh, different than what was uh, previously uh, presented. It's not easy to, to present, but I hope uh, you didn't sleep during the presentation. So I will let the word to my colleague, Beata Bliwowska. She will talk about Urban Europe and uh, FEDER. Good morning, can you hear me? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, good morning, so my name is Beata Bibrovska. I'm, I'm working with Sebastian at Innoviris in the UA part department, and this department is mainly dealing with, let's say, positioning Brussels in the UA programs, big programs like Horizon 2020, but also with the, uh, in the interregional programs, meaning in Europe we have the program and project at trans transnational level, but the, the, the costs are funded by the regions, right? So today, of course, I will a little bit uh, tell you about the new animal, European animal, <laughs> called it GPI Urban Europe, and also a, a few words about uh, ERDF, so uh, structural funds. Uh, both uh, instruments can be of your interest to finance the smart cities problematics and sub-project in smart cities. Because smart cities is of course eco, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, I don't know, energy, eco-building, but it's also the health, it's also the governance, right? So this is the complex uh, concept. How it works here? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Urban Europe. So this animal is, was set up, uh, the new initiative, Euro Euro European initiative was set up in uh, two years ago, and the commission is not giving us the money for, the, for this. Member states are pooling financial resources and human resources in research to do the project link it with European, uh, with, with, uh, with uh, city development and city problems. So we are talking here about the urban social, economic, technological shock, uh, I don't know, big data collection and use new governance models. Um, and I will now, I will not explain you how it was war, how it was set up because it was a very complicated process. We are 14 member states, more or less. So we are the majority of the Nordic countries with the very innovative concept of urban, of urban and smart cities. Uh, so we are now this year for the second time. We will release the call for proposals in more basic and applied research linked with urban areas, right? So, we are looking also for very innovative forms of project, like, like a living labs. I will explain you a little bit later what is that. The project has to be very impact-oriented, so even if we will finance the project in the 
um, let's say, basic research, academic research, the project has to end by the concrete impacts, policy methods, and the people, universities, SMEs, has to work with the, with the public sector, public authorities, and end user. This is a concept of the living labs, right? So funding comes from national or regional funding agencies of those 14 member states at their condition. So for example, I will explain you also that for, for Brussels in Noviris, we'll fund the university, but also the PMA research centers at our original conditions, right? Um, so we, are, we have now more than 13 million of the common, virtual common pot for the projects. That means that those 14 member states country for this year, for this concrete uh, call for proposals, ha have gathered 13 million euro. This is not a very big amount of money. So we will finance the project more human-centered, right? Not the big demonstrators, uh, because we, we have not the, the, the money for the moment. Then, uh, it's not working here. Oh, yeah. The project this year will be financed in two topics. Huh? This, this little, little bit organized like a, like a FP7. So we have the topics elaborated between the, those 14 member states. First one will be the governance of urban, urban complexity. Here we will more or less finance the basic research aiming at preparation of the governance model, tools, methods. But here we are more or less talking about the policy and coordination of the policy of the, of the city. And second one, and this is the reason for why it will be maybe interesting for you, we would like to fund the project uh, aiming at uh, understanding and responding to natural, environmental, environmental social, economic and technological shock. Right? This is something for the, for the SMEs. So, concretely now, we will open the call on the 18th of June between these uh, uh, 14 member states. We will close on 18th of September. This year, the call will be organized in two stages. So, in three, three uh, months, the participants have to prepare the short call for proposals between three countries. So you have to have uh, the partnership with the countries uh, of initiative, with the PMS of, or uh, universities of this, of this country. Then we'll have, of course, the evaluation that, and the invitation for the full, pro, uh, full um, uh, proposals. And we expect to start the project in June 2014, okay? Uh, before the 18th of June, uh, you will find all documents about the call text, guide for applicants, how to apply, where to apply, because of course the program has the structure. We have the pro program secretariat, etc. And also at the Noviris, we will organize on uh, 21 of June a short info session for the universities, for the PMEs, for the research center, and explain how you can participate and how we can fi finance you, right? So this is the first thing. I will not here enter into details because I think uh, we can maybe exchange later on on that. Um, uh, but I will be in charge of organizing this call uh, to help you. I will act uh, in Brussels as a mini national contact point, meaning I will help you to find the, the, the partners in other countries, right? So this is a GPI. Another one that we have, and this is very interesting for you, I think, it's the European Regional Policy. Uh, one of the instruments of this policy, it's uh, European Regional Development Fund. 
Uh, again, we will skip here the details and complexity because it's the second block of European policies uh, uh, at, at the level of the European Union and very complicated to negotiate. We are negotiating uh, the, the ERDF for six years. As you know, Horizon 2020 will start in 2014. A uh, new uh, generation of the ERDF will start in 2014. But in fact, the member states, Council, um, European Commission, Parliament, we are working on this, uh, on the shame of the shape of the program since three years, right? <laughs> so, for the first time in the original policy, research, development, innovation, competitivity for, for SMEs, entrepreneurship are at the top of the thematic areas or thematic sectors, thematic project that the uh, regions as Brussels, which, are very, uh, which is a developed region, has to plan. So the logic to preparation of this, uh, of ERDF is that, okay, we have uh, on the big, of, uh, the, the, of, of, of the, uh, on the top, uh, EU 20, 2020 strategy, then the European Commission is doing uh, a little bit the orientation for every country. Uh, and, for example, for Brussels, we know, as a, this developed region, that we have to plan in the, at the project level or operation to finance. So, E&D, competitiveness on the SMS and entrepreneurship. This is not the end. Because two years ago, we have started also, as other regions do, the preparation of the smart specialization strategy. That means the European Commission has asked each region to understand, to analyze, and to propose uh, the prior sector for the investment, prior sector in the region, right? And we, we did the same. Um, uh, notably here, CES was uh, uh, one of the, our, our privileged actors or partners. And uh, for Brussels, as a few, um, let's say, uh, the sector of the potential and to develop and to invest in is the ICT for health, is the eco building, is the smart cities, creative industries. Meaning that, and starting from this point, we will now prepare the project with the managing authorities in Brussels in, those, in, 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 in these areas, yeah? If something is not very clear, you can, you can ask me. Because it's not very clear, not very evident. <laughs> right, so we have here uh, my, my, my organization in Noviris. So we are Ministry of Research and Innovation in Brussels. And we are preparing with our partners, so now of the series of the project, uh, because the, the programming period for the ERDF has to, uh, has to be finished at the end of this year. Now we are preparing the project uh, uh, in a few niches. Yes, For example, in smart cities, uh, we have a few proposals. We will fight for that. For example, uh, we would like to set up a strategic platform uh, for smart cities and possible soup project in these smart cities can be eco-building, sustainable construction, energy technology and management and governance also. We will see if we can stick it up uh, in these smart cities. So the concept of the strategic platform is to gather at the regional level the universities, the research centers, the enterprises and to think or figure out the project, the, the, the research project of very high level, but also to gather the enterprises, and you would like that the results of the research can be valorized in our regional enterprises. This is more or less shortly the explanation of the essence of uh, smart cities. We are very happy that in this uh, programming period we have a very good, good partners, uh, not only for this niche, but for others also. So we are really preparing this, this, this project between the, the, the public sector, uh, private sector, SMEs. Uh, voilà. Okay. 
What will fund structural uh, ERDF in Brussels? This is not very clear for the moment because the regulations are still in the preparation at the European Commission in, in Council. That, but uh, in ERDF, you have to uh, finance the applied research, uh, urban innovation, training, and this project has to be also ha has to, do, to to have the impact uh, on the regional economy and grow. So here in this kind of project, we are not doing research for research. Each research has to contribute to the economic competitiveness and innovation and, and growth. So um, very optimistically, <laughs> uh, the European Commission and the regional managing authority of Brussels confirms that the first project will be released, a call for proposals for the project under structural funds will be released at the beginning of 2014. I will just come back a little bit to the budget because it's something that I, I didn't comment. Uh, you know that at the level of whole European Union, budget for ERDF is, uh, is huge, is the second European policy. I have one, one minute, yeah? Okay. Just is that uh, uh, this ERDF budget at the, the level of the European Union is very huge, but for Brussels, uh, which is a very uh, uh, developed region, we will have not, not so many. Not, we'll have more or less uh, 100 million. Right. Now, the last thing, I would like to also inform you that in Novuris, in the, in, the, in the future years, can be very, can, can help you in the preparation of the UE project. Horizon 2020, Eurostars, Eureka, Urban Europe, GTI Artemis. So we, ha we have a special disposal, disposal grants for grants. It's the money for you in the moment that you are preparing the project. The, the project we know that preparing the UE project is uh, cost consuming, uh, human resources consuming. So for that, you have the money from us, for staff, for consulting services, for legal expertise, translation, proofreading, travels. We have, uh, we have uh, some condition, of course, uh, to, to give you the, the, the money, but it's interesting to know that the region can help you, really. So, uh, for example, uh, if you are coordinator or partner, you know, in the in the UA project in the future, let's let's let, let's see here the amount that you can get. This is something interesting for you. So now, uh, in my department, we are two people. So myself, I'm really in charge of Urban Europe ERDF, but more on the context content uh, level. But I have also my colleague, Mathilde Romo, and she will be very happy to, to, you know, to, to answer all the questions about this grant for grants condition, how to claim, uh, how to have it uh, for each amount. So, uh, so voila. I think that is, this will be all from me. And uh, I would like to thank you again, Johan and Johan, for, the <laughs> for the, this kind invitation. And I wish you all the best with, uh, with all initiative that you can have. My name is Tanya Van Loon, and I work at the Brussels Enterprise Agency. Um, I have about minus 10 minutes to uh, finish the session, so I will try to go fast. <laughs> Um, the role of uh, Brussels Enterprise Agency and specifically of uh, the National Contact Point is really to provide you with uh, free of charge services uh, while Innoviris is more um, on the funding uh, part uh, of, uh, of research and innovation. Uh, so it's really complementary what we are uh, doing and providing today. Um, I will just take a few minutes for those of you who are interested in European research and innovation opportunities. There have been already many uh, interesting ideas mentioned. So here it's basically actually doing a little bit of advertisement for uh, what you can do with our services. Um, it has been mentioned already, uh, Horizon 2020 is the European Commission's funding program for the future. Uh, 
uh, for uh, research uh, and innovation in Europe. Um, it's future in the sense, um, and it's very important because the European Commission recognizes that investing in research and investing in innovation is part of the answer to the economic crisis. So this is really very important. Um, it should start 1st of January next year for a period of seven years. They are heavy negotiation underway, so hopefully it will go through. Um, the original budget is 80, million, 80 billion euro over the whole period and for all the member states. Uh, it's probable that it will be a bit lower, <laughs> but again under heavy negotiation for the moment. Um, why it's important? It's really because Horizon 2020, as the name says it, or uh, implies, is to support uh, the European strategy to a sustainable future. Um, sustainable meaning smart growth, we've heard a lot about smart cities and it's uh, certainly part of it, but also sustainable growth with a low carbon economy and in my view the construction sector is really uh, a place where uh, there is a lot that can be happening in sustainable growth and inclusive growth also um, and that's also interesting I think for uh, the construction sector uh, related to the job creation. Um, to me, it's not just by chance that we come to uh, present uh, our services. The building sector is really uh, one of the key sectors that should have a leading role uh, in all these areas. There are specific challenges, really uh, societal challenges, that will have to be uh, answered, um, specifically related to energy efficiency, also to climate change, to resource efficiency, raw material use, and smart cities, which has been uh, extensively discussed earlier uh, today. Um, I'm going back now in the past because I can't present you a project that has started next year. Um, so I will just present you very briefly one uh, a large project on sustainable zero carbon ecotown. And the main idea is to show you that Yes, probably it's complex, it looks abstract when you've never done it, but it's actually very interesting and maybe it's something for you. Um, it's a large uh, project involving three countries, Denmark, Belgium and Lithuania. Um, and the idea is um, to develop a planning and implementation approach of district of zero carbon ecotown that is possible to uh, replicate easily. That is kind of a standardized uh, approach. Uh, not only to develop it, but also, of course, to demonstrate it uh, and to show that you can integrate innovative and integrated energy, including demand and supply management uh, in, in urban areas, in, in municipalities. It's a very large project, not typical of all the European projects, 21 mil, uh, million euros over five year, years' time. The reason why I chose this one is because, of course, Belgium is involved and it can show you that companies which are not necessarily very big can also take part in such projects. So here there are 24 partners in total, six of them are from Belgium, uh, one social housing cooperative, two architects offices, um, one renewable energy um, uh, producer, one university and one municipality. Besides this, there are also local uh, subcontractors, because when you start to implement the project, you also need local subcontractors. And so, as I said in the beginning, this could be something for you, even if you've never done it. Maybe it looks complex, maybe you've heard that it's very difficult to do European projects, that there is a lot of administration. Um, it's true in one sense, I've done project myself, so I know it <laughs> firsthand. Um, however, that's why uh, you have national contact points uh, in each member state, and in Belgium, of course, it's uh, regionalized, so it's in each region. Um, so for Brussels, we are helping all the stakeholders that are located in Brussels region to access European funding for research and innovation. Mainly focusing on companies and uh, SMEs, small and medium enterprises, but also helping universities, research centre and any other um, Brussels stakeholder, associations, federation who uh, want to be uh, involved in such projects. Um, our services are free of charge. Um, we have a team of seven people who are there to help you. 
and we provide collective services as well as individual services. Um, free of charge, it's actually um, sponsored by the region and uh, by the Euro European Commission. So it's not free for everybody, but for the client it is. Um, this is a global overview of all the services. I will not go into detail because everybody is hungry. Um, but the collective uh, services include uh, information, promotion, uh, information on the upcoming calls, uh, also uh, trainings, workshop, explaining how you have to read a proposal, how you have to write a proposal, what are intellectual uh, property rights uh, should be addressed within such a project, and so on and so on. Um, and the individual services are more related to when you have decided to go for a project, we can help you to find partners if you need some additional partner to help you negotiate with your partner, set up a uh, good uh, consortium agreement, uh, check your budget, check your uh, proposal, see whether it fits well into the call. Uh, this is at the proposal stage and also we can help you if you are successful to negotiate with the European Commission uh, to execute uh, the project. We can explain for those of you who will do it for the first time, how to do the reporting, how to do updates, amendments, and so on and so on. Um, the last slide is just about uh, our uh, contact. If you want to know more, if you want to have more information, you can check our website. We have a newsletter, so you can also uh, subscribe to the newsletter and uh, get automatically informed of the upcoming proposals. And you have my uh, details below. Thank you.